Hi, it's KCC Case Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green, and my guest today is Mike Conrad, Quad Cities native, professor at the University of Northern Iowa, and composer and leader of the uh, Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Dennis. The uh, IJCO has uh, gotten back in the swing of things with some gigs. You had a gig in October up in Cedar Falls and now coming to Cedar Rapids for the very first time. Yeah, really excited to finally get down that way and uh, perform at this pretty cool venue. It'll be at CSPS in uh, Cedar Rapids this Saturday the 13th, yes? That's right, 8 p.m. Will this pretty much be the same program that you performed in Cedar Falls a month or two ago? There will be some overlap, but some stuff that's new to the band as well. So the suite that I talked with you about last time, the Fertile Soil Suite, those four pieces will close out the program this Saturday. Uh, we just recorded those in August and are looking forward to doing a, a premiere, a video premiere of the recording studio footage that was captured at that recording session. So I'm hoping that'll be ready right around Thanksgiving time or so. Um, so I'm really excited to finally get that that music out to the world uh, beyond the people who just uh, hear it at this concert or the other concert. But in addition to that, we're going to do a piece by Chris Mertz called Green Ladies. Uh, we're going to do a few of Bob Washett's pieces because the band did a recording session of his music in July. And uh, we're going to do a piece to honor John Rapson, one of my favorite compositions of his called Tulip Jive Dance. Uh, and the uh, the fertile suite that's yours. So let's talk about that first. I mean, we, I, we did talk about it prior to your um, uh, to the October gig, but refresh our memory about the history of that composition and uh, what was uh, what's what was in your head when you started working on it. Yeah, this was one of the the many things that was interrupted by COVID. But the initial premiere was set for uh, March of 2020. So uh, back before then, I was uh, I received this grant from the Iowa Arts Council uh, to record and premiere a suite of pieces for large jazz ensemble. And the inspiration comes from things that are uniquely Iowan. So it's it's meant to be kind of a a snapshot of the state of, of what we're about, you know, in terms of culture and landscape and um, the first Part of that is called battleground which has to do with the fact that we uh, are the first state to caucus in the presidential primary season so there's a lot of dissonance and intensity there uh the second one is called iowa which has to do with the history of of the state and uh the indigenous tribes that are associated with iowa uh and that one has kind of come to be my favorite of the bunch i think just because it's so unique it, it features the violin and the bassoon and some other kind of more orchestral colors uh, some of these very talented multi-instrumentalists in the band, um, forcing them to bring even more instruments to the gig. Uh, the third part is Hog Heaven, and that features the trombone section, and I, I think the connection to Iowa is fairly obvious there. And Flyover is the final piece, and that one has to do with feelings of often being overlooked or ignored in Iowa. So when you're you're composing, you know, in essence, a suite, you know, it's it's four different compositions. Why, um, why one suite with four movements as opposed to say four different songs, each of which are along that same theme? Yeah, I guess that's a good question. It, there's not too much of a difference in my mind between those things um, because they the pieces should stand alone you should be able to hear just one of them by itself and it should sound like a complete statement. But the hope is that when played together in that sequence, you kind of get a, a bigger picture um, and you get kind of a real a broad palette of colors and different tempos and different soloists featured. So one of the things that I wanted to do was kind of try to feature everyone in the band at one point or another. And you can't really do that within just one short piece. So. Um, the solos are kind of spread out across across the band across these four pieces it's something that i've i've always loved about duke ellington he he tend to tended to write in these suites where he would do um individual pieces that he would then package together uh, and sometimes it would be something that he had written three years ago and he'd say all right now that's going to be a part of this suite um so it's it's interesting to see the way he and Strayhorn would do that 
You formed the Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra specifically, not just as a vehicle for your own work, but also other Iowa composers uh, in jazz vein of your acquaintance. And uh, you mentioned uh, the late John Rapson, Chris Mertz, and uh, Bob Washett. As a musician and a composer, what do you learn when you are taking the band through their compositions? Yeah, I, I love going through other people's music as a composer myself and kind of uh, finding those little hallmarks of their sound, you know, those particular kinds of harmonies they like to use or different things that, that makes their music sound the way it does. And, um, you know, I think musicians like me, improvisers and composers are always kind of like stealing little bits and pieces from other people and adding it to your bag of tricks. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing that in a in a, I would say, copyright friendly way as well, just sort of uh, trying to take the essence of what I'm learning from these things and uh, add it to my my musical vocabulary, I guess. Uh, and a lot of that is, you know, these guys were my teachers as well. So a lot of that has permeated my music uh, prior to forming this group. What's what's your favorite thing you've stolen from, say, Bob Washett in a compositional fashion? Oh so much it would be hard to uh yeah it would be hard to pick just one thing um but i guess i would say uh one of the things i've learned from his music in particular is uh the way the inner parts move you know this is something you find in all sorts of great composers but uh the way you can make something sound so much more interesting with with the part that's maybe not the main focus but something that just moves in contrary motion to the melody or something on the inside that that makes everything else kind of shift in a different way. Uh, that's something I love about his music, the music of Gil Evans, again, Ellington, who I always, always mention as a hero of mine. The Iowa Jazz Composers Big Band is pretty much a who's who of uh, jazz players across the state. But why don't you go ahead and run down the list for us of all the familiar names that are going to be on the bandstand with you. Sure, I'll start with the saxophone section. Um, and I mentioned earlier, we've got a, a violinist as well. So that would be Robert Espy, who plays lead alto and plays some soprano saxophone and um, and then violin on, on the one piece in the suite. Uh, Jen Tidi sits next to him and plays alto saxophone and flute and clarinet and uh, soprano saxophone. All the saxophone players are bringing a bunch of instruments and, and they have to double quite a bit in this band. So they're pretty busy. Uh, Chris Mertz plays uh, plays lead tenor, uh, has a lot of the solos, and uh, also has to double. Uh, Nolan Schrader is the second tenor player, um, also featured pretty heavily in this set. And Chris remarked the other day how he just looks down the section and, and beams with pride because those three are his, his former students um, who are now playing with him. And then on the end of the section, not, not a Chris Mertz former student, but... Uh, we love him just the same. Simon Harding playing the baritone saxophone and bass clarinet and flute. Um, so really outstanding reed section. The trumpets are Corey Schmidt on lead trumpet, Dave Rezik from Des Moines, John Alabuni on third trumpet, and Steve Wheeler uh, on fourth trumpet. And the trombones are Anthony Williams, my colleague here at the university, Rich Med from Iowa City, Joel Nagel normally plays with the group, but he couldn't make this one, so we've got a sub. Actually, one of our UNI students is filling in that spot. Um, and then Zach Morton on bass trombone. Uh, Zach's brother, Drew, plays in the rhythm section. The rhythm section is essentially the, the rhythm section for Christopher's very happy band, who just played at, at Opus this past weekend, plus Steve Grismore on guitar. So Dave Teedy, me, Drew Morton, and Steve Grismore. Well, as I said, those are... Uh names that are the most familiar to all of us and playing in uh, you know playing in a different format there are not you know not a ton of big bands uh that uh, play regularly and certainly not that many that play all original music so this is a it is an opportunity to hear some of the best of iowa playing some of the best compositions as well so saturday november 13th csps uh in cedar rapids what is uh start time 8 p.m start uh, I believe that if, if you're a student and you go to their box office, you can get a discounted ticket price with your student ID. So that's something to keep in mind. $15 general admission and then $20 at the door. So get your ticket in advance and you save a little bit that way. Well, really happy to have the 
uh, Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra uh, playing a uh, First concert in Cedar Rapids, and I wish you good luck with it, and I uh, hope you have fun at CSPS Saturday night. Thanks so much, Dennis. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org culture or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.